What's up guys, welcome back to the Build Studio. Now this is my channel focused on 3D printing, laser engraving, and all other kinds of hobby related content. My name is Chris and I'm excited to share with you today's video where we'll be unboxing, setting up, and reviewing Chidi's all new XMAX 3 3D printer. Now this is probably one of the largest printers that I've unboxed and reviewed on this or any of my other channels. Now if you're new here, Thanks for checking out my channel and my videos, and I would appreciate it if you would click the subscribe button to support this channel. Now, when it comes to this 3D printer itself, in addition to its size, this XMAX 3 from Chidi is also one of the fastest 3D printers on the market according to its specs. Now, it's not the fastest, but it's one of the fastest, and it comes with a bunch of very unique features and at a very competitive cost, coming in at around $950 at the time of this filming. So stay tuned and we'll check this thing out. Now first things first, I'd like to thank Chidi for sending me out this printer to test out. Now this is not a sponsored video, so you can expect that I will give you my real thoughts about this printer, whether they're good or bad. I'd also like to thank FixDry for sponsoring a part of this video and sending me some of their new multicolor filament to test out and print with, which we'll do later in this video. Okay, so as you can see, this printer is huge. And the box that it came in was also huge, not to mention heavy. In fact, it was so large and so heavy that I had to do the unboxing downstairs in my living room and then carry this printer up to this studio, which was difficult in itself. Now the printer itself is packaged very nicely, just like most 3D printers nowadays. But unlike other 3D printers that I've unboxed on this channel, the accessories and tools aren't included in just the box itself. Instead, they're enclosed in the top styrofoam portion of the packaging itself. And the first thing that you'll notice when you open the box is that they're all laid out very nicely in that styrofoam. Now, like I mentioned previously, the box was super heavy, which of course then I should have realized that the printer itself would also be heavy, which should not have been a surprise, but it was. Now I did try several attempts to lift the printer out of the box on my own, but as expected, and as you can see from the video, I was clearly unsuccessful. I ended up having to actually lay the box on the side and carefully pull the printer out, which by far was a lot easier and something that I would recommend, especially if you're unboxing this thing on your own. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that the printer itself is encased and made completely of plastic. This also includes the top clear cover as well as the front door on the printer itself which is light, unlike any of my other high-end 3D printers, such as the Bamboo Lab, which has a glass front and a glass top. Now I assume, of course, that this is one of the reasons for its more than competitive price tag. Now like most other printers, there is an additional box inside the printer, which includes some additional accessories. Some of which I think that makes this Chidi XMAX 3 3D printer stand out from its competitors. Now in the accessories box, you do get a standard power plug as well as a full 500 gram spool of PLA filament, which is a nice change because most other 3D printers come with only a small spool of filament. In addition to that, you also get your spool attachment which connects to the back of the 3D printer itself as well as a glue stick. Now what makes Chidi stand out and what I appreciate right off the bat is that you do get a spool holder dry box which as you'll find out later, attaches to the back of the printer, allowing you to not only condition your filament, but also store and feed your filament directly from the tri box itself. On top of that, you do also get extra desiccant, which we'll later put into the dry box to keep the filament in great condition. Now, when it comes to other accessories, you do get a nice size screwdriver, and you also get an additional high temperature hardened steel hot end assembly, which you can use for more abrasive types of filaments. Now one thing to note, the pre-installed hot end on the printer itself is a standard copper alloy hot end for printing with general materials. Now that means you may have to swap it out depending on the types of materials you intend to print with. Now moving on, you do also get these four rubber feet, which are also nice because they do help to minimize the vibration and noise on your 3D printer when installed. You also get your standard bags of tools, which includes your Allen wrenches, a wrench, a few screws, a fuse, a nozzle cleaner, and a bunch of little other doohickeys that you can use to clean and maintain your printer. And in addition to all of that, you do also get this pretty high quality scraper 
to help remove the prints off the build plate, which you'll notice that I'm actually gonna use during this video in order to remove some of the more sticky prints that I test out on this printer. Then of course, there's also the instruction manual as well as this special paper for leveling your build plate as well as a network cable and a USB key that has a bunch of drivers and test prints pre-installed on the USB key itself. Now when it comes to setup and assembly, it's fairly easy and similar to most other 3D printers and comes pretty much fully assembled. The first thing you do when you unbox this is of course inside of the printer, there are four screws that you will need to unscrew in order to release the build plate, as well as some cardboard and a bunch of tape that needs to be removed in order to get this thing properly set up. And then when it comes to installing this unique dry box that came with the package on the back of the printer, it's also self-explanatory. You simply just need to attach the spool holder onto the back of the printer and then unscrew the end, slide on the dry box, which by the way only fits one way, and then re-secure it by screwing the end cap back on the spool holder itself. Now there is an additional feeding tube that you do need to attach to the dry box and the printer itself to connect both of them, which requires you to remove a placeholder pin from the dry box assembly itself and then connect it to the printer. And then what's nice, of course, is that there is a space in the dry box itself where you can place an extra pack of desiccant that will help you keep your filament dry. Now about the rubber feet, I also do recommend that you put on the four feet to minimize any kind of movement shaking and noise that you might get when printing. It does make a huge difference. Now, what I do like about this specific 3D printer is that it's got a 330 by 330 magnetic steel textured build plate with a build capacity of 325 by 325 by 315 millimeters, which makes it the largest 3D printing surface of any printer that I have in my studio today. In fact, Chidi didn't stop there and also made this printer one of the fastest 3D printers as well, with a max print speed of 600 millimeters per second and an acceleration speed of 20,000 millimeters per second squared. Now this, of course, is not the only printer that can print at those speeds, but it is the first printer that I've gotten that has a combination of both print speed and print size, not to mention at a very competitive price point. Now what really matters and what we're all probably looking for is how well does it work and how good is the quality of the printer itself? Well, we'll just have to see later in this video when we test this thing out. And then, as if print speed and print size wasn't already enough, they also equipped this 3D printer with an actively heated enclosed print chamber, which in previous generations was only found on Chidi's $20,000 and up 3D printers. And then it's also not something that's included on any of their competitors' printers, or at least any printers that are within the same price point. Now with that, the enclosure itself can maintain a maximum temperature of 65 degrees Celsius, and it also has a built-in fan for circulation as well as an activated carbon chamber, where you can place the included activated carbon and swap it out if needed if you ever need to replace it. Now the 3D printer itself does run on Clipper firmware, and it does have a 64-bit quad-core processor with 1 gig of DDR3 memory, as well as 8 gigs of eMMC storage, which is plenty for all those different files that you want to send and store on the printer itself. Now when it comes to assembly, the printer does come pretty much fully assembled and really only requires you to assemble the dry box and a few other accessories. And then once assembled, the only thing that you need to do next is go through a short setup and calibration once you turn the 3D printer on. And overall, setup should only take about 20 to 25 minutes. That setup is pretty much done on the LCD screen itself, and you basically just need to go through the setup on the screens to ensure that one, all the zip ties have been removed, two, that you've removed the screws securing the print bed, and then three, that you've removed any extra padding under the build plate, which is something that I typically forget about, so I'm glad that those instructions are on the LCD screen. And then once all those precautionary steps are taken, you just need to go through the bed leveling process and configuration, which is a guided setup using the built-in LED touchscreen. Now in testing this machine out, I decided to start with the multicolor silk PLA material that Fix Dry sent me to see how well filaments other than Chidi's would work. Now I started with a typical Benchy test print as usual, and on my first few attempts, I think I went through about three attempts, the print would not adhere to the print bed, which kind of frustrated me. 
I ended up having to use the included glue stick in order to successfully print the benchy in my first test, which on default settings turned out pretty nice, but there were a few anomalies in the print itself. But overall, I think the print quality itself turned out pretty good. Now from a quality perspective, I do love the multicolor look of the print using Fix Dry's multicolor filament. So it did turn out pretty nicely. And then for the second print, I decided to try something just a little bit more complicated and printed out the included fidget infinity cube that came on the system itself. Now this one turned out pretty nice. However, the sides that were sitting on the build plate were not as smooth and that's probably because it's a textured build plate. And also because I think it needed more glue stick for better adhesion. And then all in all, I think it turned out pretty well and turned out pretty smoothly and works very well. And it only took one attempt and everything seems to work fine and it was all in one file. So I think this thing did a pretty good job. After that, the next print that I tried was an Axotol, which is a type of sea salamander, I think. At least that's what it is when I looked it up. And that, of course, was an even more complicated print model that I downloaded from Thingiverse, which took about an hour and a half to print. I figured that it would look good if successful using the multicolored filament from Fix Dry. Now, as you can see, the print itself turned out very nice. However, it was very difficult to get off the build plate. In fact, this is the file that I really had to use a scraper to get it off and there were remnants of glue stick on the bottom of the print itself. But overall, the print itself turned out pretty amazing. And I love the way the multicolor filament looks under uh, different aspects of light. So it turned out very nice. It was all one piece and it moves pretty fluidly. Now I did also test print a Benchy using the PLA filament that came with the printer itself. And then I also loaded that Chidi filament into the included dry box accessory on the back of the printer. And what I found was that one, it was a little bit more complicated to load the filament into the dry box since I had to first connect the dry box to the printer. And then I had to load the filament into the printer before I actually placed the filament in the dry box. And then I think that's primarily because the dry box isn't like the Bamboo Labs AMS, which can load and unload filament. Now what I found, and one thing to note, is that you won't just be able to remove and connect different dry boxes containing different filaments all in one step. So hopefully at some point, Chidi will create an automatic loading dry box, which I would assume will come at an additional cost to make this feature and process a little bit easier. Now I do admit, I do love the concept, and I do love that the printer does come with this dry box accessory, however, I think it's a little bit complicated to load filament in it, and I think it could be an easier process, especially if it was automated. Now, this is probably where a lot of us who have Bamboo Lab 3D printers and AMSs get spoiled. I don't know about you, but where I typically run into challenges is loading and unloading filament, especially when you're doing it manually. Now, going back to the print job itself, using the standard PLA filament from Chidi, I ended up printing another Benchy test print and I think the quality ended up even better than my multicolor version. Now this in itself is more of a configuration issue where I just need to adjust the print settings specifically for silk material, which is the ones that I've used from Fix Dry. Now the multicolor does add an extra pizzazz to the print job, but I think just standard PLA that's not silk turned out with better quality. Now, if you really wanna take your 3D print to the next level or make them stand out, then I definitely recommend picking some of this multicolor filament from Fix Dry. It really does take your 3D prints to the next level and just makes them look very unique and really cool, especially under different types of light. I just love how they kind of change color and just makes it look unique. So if you're interested, I will leave a link to this filament in the description section below. Now going back to the printer itself, if you're like me and you're not a big fan of using a glue stick for better adhesion, you'll probably need to print an extra adhesion layer in your 3D prints. Now, what I do like about textured build plates is that no glue stick is required. However, in this case, it does seem like it's needed if you aren't printing that extra adhesion layer. Now, I'm not sure what the difference is between the textured build plate in this printer is, versus those in my Bamboo Lab printers. But during my test prints, especially the smaller ones, I was not able to get the 3D prints to stick to the build plate completely. 
all the way through the print until completion like I am able to do on the Bamboo Lab without a glue stick. So if you know, definitely let me know in the comment section below so I can figure this thing out or change some settings or do whatever is necessary so I don't have to use a glue stick. Now on larger prints, I'm sure it's fine because there's an adhesion layer and there's just a bigger surface area to connect to the build plate itself. So definitely let me know in the comment section below because I want to figure it out. Now, overall, I am really impressed with this X-Max 3 3D printer from Chidi. It's got a very impressive build volume and probably one of the largest build areas of any of the faster 3D printers in the same price range. And it does come with a number of unique accessories at an amazing price. Now, when comparing it to other high-end 3D printers, this printer, of course, doesn't have any built-in camera. It doesn't have an automated AMS to load and unload filament. And it is super heavy. But really those are all things that I can do without and probably survive with. It's got a huge print area that allows you to print objects up to 325 by 325 by 315 millimeters, all at a blazing max speed of 600 millimeters per second. And it does come with a drive box accessory, which is something that no other 3D printer comes with that I know of. It's got features such as chamber fans and heating units to both heat and cool the chamber for better print quality as well as a bunch of other features at a cost that is both competitive and affordable for what you get. This X-Max 3 is definitely a 3D printing solution that I would highly recommend, especially after using it for a few days and also knowing that it can print the larger prints that I wasn't able to before. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more affordable than a lot of those other high-end 3D printers out there, and that I've also reviewed on this channel, and also something that has pretty much the same features but is also capable of printing larger jobs, then this is the 3D printer for you. In fact, this just might be my new primary 3D printer for some of my upcoming larger projects, which is something I'm excited to share with you in future videos. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please support this channel by smashing that like button and subscribing. Now, if you are planning to buy this X-Max 3 3D printer for yourself, please do use my link in the description section below. I will also add and update any promotional details along with any coupons that come along in that section as well. Please do also make sure you ring that bell icon if you're interested in seeing future videos like this or if you want to get notified when I post new 3D printing content. Until next time, see ya.